Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another edition of the Cover Up Show. I am your host, Rahmat Wasim. Cover Up Show is designed to demystify the personality of the Muslim woman, giving her voice and celebrating her. Happiness, they say, is not something you postpone for the future. It is something you design for the present. Celebrate your life. Be in the moment. Enjoy the struggles and be a blessing to yourself and the people around you. Today we are honored to be in the presence of a future Your Honor. We have a lawyer in the house. She is an associ a senior associate with a private firm and works on... Welcome back and many, many thanks for joining us as always. We know you're a lawyer and you work as a senior associate and also you head the corporate um, affairs at your place. But who is Halima? We want to get to know you more. Tell oh, us about yourself. Well, I... I... Halima El Alawa, uh, I was born somewhere in the 1980s in Accra, but then I had to move to Nigeria with my parents and had my basic education and secondary education and then came back to Ghana for my tertiary education. When did you get back to that country? I was back in Ghana in 2000, oh, okay. the year 2000. And then I gained admission for a diploma in librarianship at the University of Ghana. And then completed in 2003. Librarianship? Librarianship. So you'd have been in a library? Yes. But you're a lawyer? Yes. But so Interesting, um, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, the librarianship wasn't what I really wanted to do by circumstances. So immediately after the librarianship, I applied for the degree program. That was in 2004. Mm. And then got admission to study political science, religions, and information studies. I graduated in 2007 mm. in political science with information studies, and I had a first class. <laughs> I saw the people came. You and your friend, um, <laughs> Nafisa. Yes, yeah. I met Nafisa in level 200, and our friendship sparked off almost immediately. Not we sure, seem yeah. to have a lot in common, so mm. it just rolled naturally. And mm. Uh, we complimented each other. She's more aggressive. Um, she's vocal. So she pushes she, you. She's, she's a little naughty, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like the quiet type on the side. So the two uh, of us, we... The we, uh, Yes, uh, the two of us. Kill us. <laughs> <laughs> First class. Both of us, yes. Mashallah. Uh, how, how did it feel? Well, it was something we worked for. Right from the word go, we knew where we wanted to go to. So we worked towards it. So it didn't come as something unexpected. Mm. It's something we worked for and prayed for. And when we got it, alhamdulillah, we celebrated it. How did you get now to your um, current and after school? What happened? Yes. Um, whilst I was doing my national service in 2007 at GBC, oh, okay. I applied for an LLB. Were you in the newsroom or you were in the I was in the library. <laughs> you, you, you fell on the course that you did, did for a diploma. diploma. Yes, yes. So I was put uh, at the library in GBC. Nothing ever goes waste. Uh, uh, no, no, no knowledge is waste actually. Yes. So I, I, I served. Whilst there, I decided to apply for an LLB program. Oh, okay. So I applied for, again almost immediately at the University of Ghana and were shortlisted for the exams. I passed the exams, were shortlisted for the interview. And mind you, it's really competitive mm -hmm. at the University of Ghana. So okay. we. Uh, alhamdulillah, we scale, I scaled through with the interview and I was in the classroom. <laughs> studying? <laughs> studying for oh. LLB. Mm -hmm. And um, I got married almost immediately after school and then got pregnant almost immediately as well. Would so during the LLB or whilst, in the Liberia? Whilst or? applying, no, after my the degree. Mm -hmm. So before I applied for the LLB, I was pregnant. And then when I gained the admission, I was in my seventh month of pregnancy. Wow. I wasn't sure whether I could pull it over. Mm -hmm. The rest is history. <laughs> and passing the bar, how was it? Because well, so um, we the at the University of Ghana, the LLB was two years program, mm -hmm. so four semesters. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, during our time, it was an automatic transition into the mm -hmm. law school oh, okay. as compared to recent times yeah, where it's a little bit competitive. Yes. Yeah. So we rolled over to the Ghana School of Law in 2010. Mm. And then um, two rigorous years, and I was eventually called to buy in 2012. Mashallah. <laughs> How did you feel? It, it, it wasn't easy. Mm. But I think Allah has a way of helping. Yeah, but helping you have a structure. I think you put your life in a certain way. Yes, I discipline myself. I, the key word here is discipline. Mm. And if, if you don't have that discipline, you, you can't go places. So mm. I disciplined myself and then I persevered. I knew where I was going to and my target was to reach there. Mm. So I didn't let any other forces pull me down. Mm. It was where I was going that I was aiming at, and I have to lie. I'm not uh, discipline, persevere, persevere, and aim high. <laughs> Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, what what's happening? I mean, you know, you're working yes. as a senior associate. What? How's yes. your life like now? Well, um, at the moment, I'm working in a law firm. I, I apparently, my husband is also a lawyer. So, oh, okay. Um, we own our own law firm. And um, so, should I say I'm working for my husband? So he's yeah. my boss. He's your boss. <laughs> yes, more or less. A lawyer in the firm at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's refreshing to hear. I mean, it's, it's it makes me happy to to hear that he's a Muslim, right? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, he's a Muslim, yes. yeah. and you are a Muslim, and he's interested in seeing you pursuing your education yes. and even working with you. Uh, yes, it's interesting to know that I actually never wanted to do the law. But he he pushed me. He pushed you. He pushed me. He he, we nearly even fought over it because I wanted to be in academia. After political science, I wanted to read them um, international relations mm. at the Legal Center for Affairs. Mm. But he also a lawyer was like, no, I know your potentials, and I have the books here. Who will read them for me? The law books. So he was like, no. Um, apply for the law instance where I was being stubborn. I wanted to go into academia, so but he too did not give up on me. He he insisted, he went to buy the form, got me to fill it. He did everything, and then I was like, Okay, but you want me to apply? Okay, I'll go and write the exam. I didn't prepare as others were preparing for the exams. Mm -hmm. But I okay, I'll go for this just for just, there just to be peace. peace. Exactly. Well, when the, the results came out, unfortunately, those who were keen on it <laughs> did didn't, not, didn't get the admission <laughs> exactly, and I didn't put in so much effort. And there it was. My name was on the board for having passed the exam. Mm. So I was like, wow. Mm. And I shouldn't joke with this. Yeah. If if I've been able to scale through. Mm the exam and we were almost a thousand who wrote the exams and it was scaled down to about if my memory saying about 400 or so wow i was like no then i shouldn't joke with this yeah. it looks like it's it's a, a something that i shouldn't take for granted mm -hmm. so i i really put all my efforts into the interview and alhamdulillah i also passed the interview wow and you're working with him i'm working and, uh, and how does it feel like well, work is work. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, as I said, I've disciplined myself. Um, work is work. Um, I, I, as soon as I step out of the courtroom or I step out of the office, I leave my my law there, and as soon as I get to the house, I'm the wife. Yeah, the wife so there's the there's a, there's a, I've I've demarcated it. I don't let one control the other. When I'm in the office, purely office work. When I'm in courtroom, purely courtroom work. When I'm at home, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. In the kids and all, mm -hmm. your kitchen, mm -hmm. frying, cooking, and all. So they so say, they say. split Halima into all the various roles. I wonder how I'm even able to do it, but mm -hmm. I'm able to define the lines. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. try not to bring work home. Yeah. I try not to have divided attention as far as the kids are concerned. Okay. So that if you bring work home, how how do you 
So if I have any schedule, I try to finish it in the office. Mm. When I'm home, I think that's your another mommy, department. Your wife. Yes, another yeah. that's another department. It's a whole industry. Also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. That's another sector altogether. So mm. I don't let each, I don't let one roll into the other. Maybe I try it's also not because to. of the support of your husband. Because yes, if yes. you don't have someone who is um, interested in you pursuing education and just because I I often hear most you know, women complain that, oh, my husband didn't want me to work, so I had to stay home and all that. So, uh, so kudos, kudos to, to Mr. <laughs> um, he hasn't mentioned any, but you know yourself. God bless you. We are grateful for pushing her, making her to yeah, become, he's, you he's, know. He's, he's my source of inspiration. The he's, future, he's your honor. We, 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 are, we are waiting for you. He, he's, he's my everything. And he has never relented on that. Mm. He's always pushing mm. till mm. tomorrow. He's, he's always pushing. He's, he's always behind me. Mashallah. Any, what inspires you? I mean, what, what, what drives you the most? What's your motivation? Well, and, uh, the, to succeed. Yeah. To succeed in whatever. I, 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 I don't like failures. Mm. I, I don't like to put my efforts in something and then it turns out wrong. I, 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 I can't. I can't stand that. You're so, a sorry loser. No, so no, you, you, I, you I, choose I, to be on the, on, the, <laughs> on the winning side. I I never like, no. So I always put my all mm. and try to succeed in whatever I do. But then at the same time, I'm, I always put the f fact that I'm a Muslim behind me mm. in whatever I do. So Allah is my source of inspiration. inspiration. <laughs> but definitely there are sometimes... Um, some some challenges can come your way and you know we all don't plan for failures but sometimes certain things happen that you know make you have a rethink or a mind what has been the most challenging moment in your life um, but, um that was when i i came back from nigeria and i was asked to go and do a diploma in librarianship it's it wasn't something i wanted honestly it's and I didn't understand why I should go and do a diploma. Why? Why? Then, why the diploma? Then, well, I am not too sure to date, but that was the instructions I was to follow. From where? From my dad. <laughs> 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 and as an obedient child, I I, I listened to mm -hmm. him. And mm -hmm. The rest is history. Maybe he just wanted you to have an entry point. I I I, I suspect because, so. Because um, so. based on experience, you know, when you come into a different um, jurisdiction, jurisdiction with yes. other certificates, yes. it's very difficult. Probably, so maybe that was the, the available yeah. uh, so point. That's, that's where I had to start from. So how how did and you take it? Well, I, it wasn't something I was satisfied with, but I didn't have any option. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any option, mm -hmm. so it's take it or leave it. So I had to just go with it. And that, that, but I, I still through. I, mm -hmm. I did my best. I came surprisingly. I came out with a distinction. My lowest grade was a B. That was in the field track, in the mm -hmm. field aspect. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I did extremely well. I think well you have a thing for distinction. <laughs> 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 you have a thing for th uh, first class and distinction. And that, as, as, I, as I said, I, I try to succeed in everything I do. I put in all my best. Station with our guest, Halima. Hali. No. <laughs> so we've, you know, after the Liberianship and all that, now we've gone to uh, uni, we did the LLB, we were called to the bar and all that. We're working. Yes. But Growing up, what was your all-time ambition? What did you want to be? Interestingly, and how, 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 did you, how have you pursued it so far? Interestingly, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a journalist. My dad is a journalist, so I wanted to be a journalist. Mashallah. So that was that was all I aimed to. I wanted to be a newscaster. And sit on TV. Like, sit, sit on TV <laughs> and be reading news. I, when I was even in secondary school, I was in there's this club called the Press Club. Mm -hmm. I was I was I was the president. Then I used to read news for. <coughs> students at the assembly. So I wanted to be a journalist, but the <coughs> break came when I came down and I had to go and do mm -hmm. the librarianship. So 
the journalism in me. But you do your service in GBC, if, if, if my yes. if I heard yeah. well. Yes, yes. But as I said, I was put in the library, so mm -hmm. I, I, my, the librarianship that, the, the journalism in me died when I was doing the diploma and the degree. Mm. So my focus was to go into academia, mm. Mm. and then but then when my husband came with his LLB thing, I had to go with go him. With him. Yeah. So that was where the, that was the, where the change in, yes, in, yes. in, 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 in course. Ca in career came in, mm. yes. Ami, well, how do you see um, success in life? What's, what's your definition of what success is? And then um, does religion have a role to play in success? Well, um, when you make up your mind that um, you have a creator who oversees your whole personality and um, the, at the end of the day you'll be judged by the creator mm. and as such the creator himself has spelled out certain instructions you have to follow. So long as you go by the instructions, you succeed in everything you do. So. Follow the creator, follow the instruction, you become successful. But what's the definition of what success is? Success is achieving what you set out to do. Mm. So how, however you achieve what you set out to do, mm. and at the end of the day, you've gotten what you want to, or what you want, or what you want to do. Mm. That is That's success. success. Yes. As far as I'm concerned. That's success. It's true, and f and and me my, my my the refreshing part is the God factor. Yes, not taking <coughs> and, and that because you you can gain everything, but if if you don't have the love of Allah with you, I mean it's it's as if you you. And you've if done if if you live your life without religion, mm. you are just living an empty life. It's it's cool that you mention religion. <coughs> you being a lawyer and being a woman yes. and a Muslim woman at that. Yes. You know, we have Muslim women and the uh, myths and this perception that it's almost as if a Muslim woman doesn't have a voice, doesn't have any rights, and everything is determined by the males in her life. What's your, what's your take on that? In, in recent times, I've handled cases where I realize um, most women, not only even Muslim women, but most women generally tend to put all their hopes and reliance on the man. Mm. And for, for those who are married, they tend to put all their dependence on their husbands. So the husband provides all the necessities of life, caters for their children, and you find the women not working or are too comfortable, so long as their mm. husbands are comfortable. Mm. The problem comes when the husband is no more or there is a divorce. And then the woman does not know what, where to start from. Mm. You find out that um, the over dependence on the male is to our uh, to our disadvantage, mm -hmm. because once the man is no more, then the woman cannot mm. find a source of life. Why? 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 Why do you think that happens? Is it because of a patriarchal, you know, upbringing? Our system is I, more geared towards given everything to the man. So maybe probably, you see, it's when you go to some of them, when you look at their backgrounds, maybe the educational level is low. Or even if the educational level is okay, mentally, probably they are not empowered. Could, could that be some of the influences? It's, yeah, it's, our, it's our sociological background. It's, it's how society has put things and we've grown up to meet. Mm. There is high time we depart from that. Mm. It doesn't matter whether you're educated or not. Women are enterprising generally. generally. Mm. So you find our mothers, our grandmothers who never stepped in schools, but are wealthy. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. But I think we become too comfortable when our men are working and sustaining the family. Mm. And we feel, oh, no, he should do it. Mm. Ours is to raise the Naturally. kids. But I think um, it's high time most women, even if your husband is well-to-do, have a source of livelihood. Mm. Find something doing that will you get regular income. In the event that the man is not there, life goes on. You can sustain yourself. Yes, because it's so pathetic that you see the woman 
having nothing. I, I, I did a case where the man traveled for a conference and then lost his life. Oh. And the woman, yes, and the woman upon, upon hearing that mm. had a um, psychological problem and the children were just left, left on their own because she found it difficult to start life all over mm -hmm. again by the man. Mm. So it's high time we we find something doing for ourselves and not, if the man brings fine, but over dependence on mm. men, mm. we should try mm. to discourage to To, to, to dis discourage mm. But you see, there's also this um, angle where um, it's, it's as if the, the woman is hidden, the uh, appearance, veiling and because to some people the fact that you even put on a veil means that you are um you are being subdued by a man and fine that might be wrong because we know better but there's also another angle where most men most of them use islam to subdue their women i think we we need to educate ourselves as women as well Mm. We need to read on the position of Islam as far as women are concerned. Mm. Never in the history of Islam have women been relegated to the background. Starting with is with the Prophet and his wife. Mm. The wife was at the an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. a wealthy woman. Mm. So never. You mean uh, 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 Khadija? You go through the women mm. in mm. Islam. Mm. No, no woman has been relegated to the background. The women in those days were outspoken. So if, I think we should read. Mm -hmm. Read more about the position of women as far as Islam is concerned. Nothing stops you from doing anything. Your veil can take you everywhere. When I was in the law school, I remember a lecturer asked me, just out of the when you are called to the bar, how are you going to wear your wig and, and, and gown? I was like, when we reach that bridge, we'll cross it. And I've, everyone who knows me, I practice with my veil. I'm, I so you go to the courtroom with your veil on? Yes. I wear and, and where would you, so you put the wig on? Yes, I tuck my, my veil in, put my beep, and then I'm off to, it's, I don't even feel I'm in a veil or, I don't allow the veil to be hidden. Mm. I never allow the veil to be hidden. It's throughout my, my growing up. I'm out there. There are times that I even enter the courtroom and everything ceases. People are shocked to, to, see, see, to, see, to see a Muslim in, in, a, in a veil entering the courtroom with a wig on. With a wig, with a wig on. So the veil should never deter you. Mm. Our dressing can accommodate everything. It depends on how you Maybe sometimes to um, we we should add a little style to the veiling. <laughs> uh, you can wear, a, a, for instance, our our dress code is black and white, mm. so you don't go and put the blue veil mm -hmm. and, and enter it. and enter a court. You'll be looking like a peacock. Yes. <laughs> on, on that peacock note, um, I just want you to sum up in summary what you would tell our women out there, especially Muslim women. Um, the issues about rights and their pursuing of their freedoms and living and impact in society. As a woman, um, as a Muslim woman, we are entitled to uh, Islamic education mm -hmm. as well as secular education. The two should be linked together. Islamic education shouldn't be separate from the secular education. Mm -hmm. We have to learn both. And that gives us a greater, um, a bigger chance. Mm. We have an upper hand because we have the two. Mm. The Quran is a whole encyclopedia on its own. Mm. So stick by what the Quran says mm. and you are fully educated. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's been such an insightful and educating episode and we are grateful. Um, it's my pleasure. Madam Halima El Alawa. <laughs> Just before we go, our last one.
see that the best and most beautiful things in this world cannot be seen or touched. They must be felt. How are you making people feel around you? Join me again, same time, same place, on cover up. I'm Rahmat Wasi. Jazakumla. May Allah be with us all.